Hey guys, what's up? My name is David Strauss with F-Stoppers. Usually I'm a little bit more behind the scenes, but today I wanna to talk to you about backdrop lighting and how to control it. I'm here with my friend Matt Hyatt. We're gonna use him as a subject. Let's get to it. Now this backdrop was made by Ryan Farag from Rough Lux Backdrops. And it's pretty unique, it's kinda got this rumpled gray-brown semi-glossy look to it. Much different than your standard backdrop. Ryan hand makes all his backdrops, so if you wanna check out more information, it's in the link below. So when most people set up for a portrait, they're thinking more about the lighting on their subject, which is very important. But sometimes the lighting on the backdrop gets lost in the mix. So let's talk through a few things that affect what kind of light hits your backdrop. For this first example, I'm going to be using a seven foot octabox. Now this is an excessively large softbox for a normal portrait setup but I want it to emulate a big soft window that you might be able to find with natural light as well. So these concepts will apply both to strobe light or a nice big window setup. Now the core rule of lighting that we're gonna talk about is the inverse square law. This means that every time you double the distance between your subject and the light source, you're going to reduce the power that is hitting your subject by half. This means where you place your light relative to your subject and relative to your background is going to affect the relative exposure between your subject and your background. Let me show you some examples. So for this first shot, I've placed Matt four feet from the backdrop and the light is four feet in front of Matt. This means that the exposure of Matt should be one stop brighter than the exposure of the background. Let's take a shot and see how this looks. Now from here, we can change the relative exposure of our subject and background by moving our subject or the background away or closer to the light source. So for this next shot, let's pull our softbox back and give a little more distance to play with for the inverse square law. If you were shooting with a natural light source such as a window, you'd simply push your backdrop away from the window to accomplish the same effect. Now with the light source farther from the backdrop, we can now move Matt closer to the backdrop to give a more even exposure between him and the backdrop, or closer to the light to give a much different exposure between him and the backdrop. Let's start with placing Matt closer to the backdrop. Now if you compare the exposure of this shot to the first shot, the exposure on Matt is equivalent between both shots, but you can see a big difference in the light on the background. This is because Matt and the backdrop are now pretty equidistant from the light source, which is even farther away. There is a lot less light fall off between Matt and the backdrop. Now if we pull Matt much closer to the light source and drop our exposure to compensate, the light on our backdrop should drop dramatically. Let's give this a shot. So as you can see in this image, the exposure on Matt is pretty consistent with the other two shots, but the background is far darker now. Now a few other things that you need to keep in mind when doing this, obviously you are changing the depth of field of the subject and the background, and depending on your background size, you may need to back up and zoom in even farther to be able to compress your subject onto the background. Now controlling light on your background is obviously far easier if you have multiple light sources, and this is why strobes are so helpful when shooting portraits. With a second strobe, I can dedicate one to completely lighting the background, and one I can get closer to my subject and reduce the amount of fall off that's hitting the background. Thus, I can control both the light on my subject and the light on my background independently. So let's swap off this giant softbox for one that's a little smaller, that I can control the light spill on Matt's face a little bit better, and let's bring in another bare bulb strobe to hit our background. So for this next shot, I've placed my second light hitting the background at a similar angle as to my key light is hitting Matt. Let's take a shot and see how this looks. As you can see, the light on Matt looks pretty good, and the light on the background is far brighter than any of the shots that we've previously taken. Because the background light is coming from camera right, the right side of the background is much brighter than the left side. To compensate for this, I can change the position of my strobe to more evenly spread across the background. So I'm gonna place this strobe right behind Matt, pointed at the background. Let's take a shot and see how this looks. As you can see, the light is now evenly spread across the background, but it's far too bright in my opinion. Now the beauty of having multiple lights is that you can compensate the background light independently of the foreground light. So let's drop the power of our background light by two stops and take another shot. Now the exposure of the background in this shot is a lot more pleasant to me, 
The focus of the image is drawn a lot more toward matte instead of the background, but I'd like to improve this image even more, and for this next step, I'm going to add a modifier to the front of the strobe. The biggest problem I'm having with the strobe right now is it's spilling everywhere across the image evenly, but I'd like to contain it behind Matt's head a little more. So I'm going to add a 10 degree grid to the front of the strobe. Let's take a shot and see how this looks. Now this is a huge difference. The light is now focused right around Matt's head, which draws the eyes of the viewer directly into Matt's face. This is what I really want in my portrait shots. So now that we've explored a few lighting setups, I want to work on a final shot. Matt and I have a running joke about how he used to be a president of a local cycling club, so I want to work on a shot that lives up to the quality of his former role. Alright, so I've settled on this final lighting setup. As a key light, I'm placing a 5 degree grid on one of my strobes and pointing it directly at Matt's face. I've also got a softbox behind that light acting as a little fill. To edge out the other side of Matt from the background, I'm bringing in a 1x3 strip box. Finally, I've kept the 10 degree grid on my background light, but I've moved the light to a higher angle and I've placed it so that it's skimming across the background. Since this background has such a cool texture, I want to bring that out and have the direction of my light such that it is drawing the viewer's attention to Matt's face. So with this setup, let's take a few shots and see what we get. Cool guys, I think I've settled on a final image here. I'm pretty happy with the results. Hopefully this demonstration has given you guys a little more understanding on how to separate the lighting of your backdrop and your subject. If you guys want to check out some of Ryan's backdrops, he creates a wide variety of looks and I'm sure you can find something in the link below that would fit your shoots. If you guys want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe to the F-Stoppers YouTube channel. Check out fstoppers.com for daily news and educational articles. And if you want to dive really deep into photography, check out fstoppers.com slash store where we produce a wide variety of full-length tutorials that will teach you everything you need to know about specific genres.